industry. Some of us have been doing like cases together, and some of you have I've worked together with. So it's it's a great honor to see you all, and really great to uh, that you came that you come here for this event today. So, without further ado, I'll uh, start out the presentation. Let's see if I need the clicker is here. Works. Cool. So 2020 will be the year where major financial institutions uh, will develop their cryptocurrency strategies throughout their business functions. So I think we are fast approaching a, a time where cryptocurrencies is no longer an if, but a when and a how. So what we did, um, we queried, we queried uh, in September, we polled 350 fin financial professionals at the ACAMS ML and Financial Crime Conference. We asked them what would be the most likely factor to motivate the institution to get more involved in cryptocurrency. And nearly half of them said that client demand was driving this. And demand is only going to grow. Adoption of cryptocurrency rises every year, and cryptocurrency exchanges are offering more investment opportunities than ever before. So polling from the, from the research firm YouGov said that Eight out of 10 Americans, they know about at least one cryptocurrency. And 20% uh, of those, they already invested in crypto. And if you look at uh, the millennials, it's more than one third who've bought cryptocurrencies within the past year. But not only that, people who work at or with major financial institutions, they're bullish on Bitcoin. And here's something that will surprise you. They told us that they expect Bitcoin to outperform stocks, fixed income, and house prices over the next 12 months. So at Chainalysis, we've been, we've been talking to financial institutions for the past five years. And I would say that this data only confirmed our enthusiasm for cryptocurrency that we've been hearing from, from many of them for years. But despite this apparent enthusiasm from financial professionals, banks seems unsure about cryptocurrencies. That's still the case. Some banks even take a hard line against allowing their customers to invest in crypto. So if you use your Wells Fargo bank account or credit card to uh, move funds into an account at Coinbase, the transaction will actually fail. And if you use the same credit card a few, few moments later uh, to uh, re-up your, for example, Amazon Prime account, everything will work just fine. And if you then ask Wells Fargo why this is the case, they will tell you that, unfortunately, Wells Fargo does not allow transactions involving cryptocurrencies. So you can see it here on Twitter. Uh, and again, most banks, they are not as explicit about keeping an arm's length from, from cryptocurrency. If you wire money from uh, your savings account into, for example, say, Bittrex, everything might just work just fine, or maybe it won't. So the rules around this haven't been fully written yet. We do know, though, that customers of big financial institutions, they trade cryptocurrencies, and they'll transfer money from their checking, savings, and brokering accounts to do so. And as cryptocurrency gain mainstream acceptance among customers, they are going to demand a more frictionless experience, and the banks who can't offer that going forward, they'll be left behind. So banks, they have cryptocurrency exposure because their customers are taking them along for the ride. And most finance professionals, they believe that less than 10% of their customers trade crypto, which is likely an underestimation. And even worse than that, nearly a third thinks that they have no cryptocurrency exposure at all. So banks may think that they're saying no to crypto, but that's not an answer that's going to, uh, that's going to work in the long term. So long there's cryptocurrency, and as long as there are banks, customers will move bank deposits into the, into the crypt cryptocurrency accounts. And if they can't do so directly, they'll use a step in between, as we also have seen, but they will do it. So if you assume that none of your customers trade cryptocurrencies, you'll only have to be wrong once to be exposed to the asset. And underestimating or not knowing your exposure to cryptocurrency introduces a risk. Even if only 2% of customers were trading cryptocurrencies, 
financial institutions could have exposure to anything from money laundering, terrorist financing, human trafficking, sanctioned entities, and other illicit, illicit activity unknowingly. So why are banks taking such a, a hard stance? Like, why are they maintaining this distance to cryptocurrency exchanges? So one school of thought is that banks, they are threatened by, by the, the rise of cryptocurrencies. And they refuse to hasten the demise of their own businesses. I don't believe that. And I'm pretty sure that most of you don't believe that either. So what our poll respondent told us is that it's about control, compliance, and lack of will from the C-suite. And I'm pretty sure that the lack of will from the C-suite also stems from the lack of control and compliance. So not only are financial institutions concerned about their know your customer and anti-money laundering obligations, they're also concerned about their reputations. So no financial institution wants to find out that it was complicit in, trans in helping customers transfer money to uh, a cryptocurrency exchange that collapses due to fraud, or to an exchange that is a known resource for black, black market cartels, human trafficking, or terrorist financing. Or maybe there's a hope that taking the stance, we don't allow that, or we don't do that, that will keep auditors quiet and regulators away. But over time, regulators and auditors, they will follow the flow of money. And the stance that, or the answer that we don't do that is not going to provide cover for that much longer. Got it. <laughs> now, what if I told you that I could eliminate, what happened here? Let's go right back here. We are good. Um, cool. Now, what if I told you that I could eliminate two of these concerns, as you saw before. What if we took away the inability to control for illicit activity facilitated by cryptocurrencies and the inability to comply with regulations? I'm pretty sure that the lack of support from the C-suite will also go away. And then we are just left with the market opportunity. And we all know how bullish you are on that one. So enabling financial institutions to control for illicit activity and enabling them to comply, that's exactly what Chainalysis does. For years, we've analyzed blockchain transactions to help law enforcement, regulators, exchanges, and other financial institutions to understand where the flow of funds begin and end. We already work with more than 100 cryptocurrency businesses across 40 countries worldwide. We do that to provide anti-money anti -money laundering compliance technology which is critical for them to fulfill their regulatory obligations and ensure a safe and effective use of their platforms. We also work with law enforcement in law enforcement agencies in more than 20 countries. We do that to enable them the capabilities that can keep their citizens safe. For example, we'll hear later today about a case study on how law enforcement used our technology to take down the biggest child abuse material site ever. So our powerful data puts us in a position to help financial institutions solve a problem which has needed solving since the earliest days of crypto. We can tell you which cryptocurrency businesses and services are low risk and which are high risk of fraud, money laundering, and manipulation and instability. Throughout the financial services industry, institutions use technology and data analytics to decide what counterparties to transact with on behalf of their own balance sheet and their customers. We've been working with banks uh, since 2015 and learned how we could build a compliance program for ranking and analyzing the crypto businesses that banks uh, will choose as partners. So now is the time for banks to engage with cryptocurrency industry. Our service data show that the banks are ready and we can use our knowledge of the blockchain to show them how to engage safely. Our underlying data allows for the best understanding of what's happening on the blockchain, and we are making this understandable to financial institutions. We mapped out uh, businesses transacting in cryptocurrency, including exchanges, and are able to inform banks about risk profiles. Many of these cryptocurrency businesses, they have state-of-the-art compliance programs and have been customers of ours for years. 
I'm excited to share with you a new product. We've been developing and refining that over the last many years. And we've been doing that since we first started working with financial institutions. It enables you to uncover cryptocurrency risks and unlock the opportunities. It's called Chainalysis Cryptos. Cryptos is the Greek root for crypto cryptography, and it means hidden, and it's the very basis of this entire industry. Chainalysis Cryptos sets a standard for evaluating and analyzing cryptocurrency, the cryptocurrency industry, bringing existing cryptocurrency activity within financial institutions to the forefront. And with this software, financial institutions will be able to develop cryptocurrency compliance best practices, benchmark cryptocurrency businesses, and make informed decisions about who they want to do business with based on objective and analysis of dependable data for the first time ever. So far, financial institutions, Chainalysis Cryptos is a core component of a compliance policy that covers cryptocurrency exposure that customers bring to the, to the bank every single day. It serves as a valuable due diligence resource for financial institutions who are considering offering banking services to cryptocurrency businesses. And further, it is the foundation for the future expansion into this asset class. So let's revisit why 2020 is the year where financial institutions will embrace the cryptocurrency industry. So our survey shows that they want to expand their cryptocurrency operations. The major factors that financial institution, that financial services executive cited as motivation, they're all in place. Customer demand is there and it's growing. Banks think this is the future and there is a legitimate money-making opportunity. So your customer are always all, already using crypto and you need to delight customers not to bury your head in the sand. So again, how do you, how do you get there? How do we enable this? Well, we enable you to analyze existing risk associated with the exposure you have to cryptocurrency, and that's likely highly underestimated. Further understand which cryptocurrency businesses are leading the way in compliance, so you can consider offering banking services to exactly those. And finally, take steps to allow your customers to trade with trusted exchanges and explore this new investment opportunity in a safe way. So from there, Again, nothing happens overnight, but there is a potential for a virtuous cycle. When banks feel comfortable, more people will have access to cryptocurrencies, more transactions make cryptocurrency markets functions more efficiently, and that efficiency will create even more trust for the asset class, and banks will eventually generate a significant revenue from cryptocurrency transactions. Chainalysis Cryptos enters beta phase now and will launch in early 2020. So we are hoping that financial institutions, uh, this, will, that this will bring financial institutions one step closer to offering access to cryptocurrencies, and we hope that you will give cryptos a try. Customers, businesses, regulators, and law enforcement are already there, and it's so much better to know how your customers use cryptocurrencies than to stay in the dark. Thank you. <laughs>